Good day folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying a bomber, uh, green with chartreuse uh, butt bomber. And we're going to be doing it on the CS42 in a number two size. The CS42 is uh, my go-to hook for bombers has been for a couple years now. I really like this hook because of the heavy gauge uh, wire it uses. It makes for a very strong hook and I also really really prefer to tie on these hooks and fish with these hooks because of the gape. It's a nice large gape. Uh, it makes for really great hookups. So we're going to use our UTC 140 thread and we're going to start at the front and I give myself a little bit of room um, extra just to tie in my head afterwards and I just lay down a little bit of thread for my uh, wing to grip on too. So I've already pre um, prepped all my material but this is a uh, white calf tail that we're going to be using for the wings and you can size your wings to your preference I mean I gen generally try to size them to be about half of my shank length but that doesn't always work out and I just tie this in like so. Now when I make that cut, uh, getting rid of this extra material, I do it on an angle because uh, when it stops abruptly, like I'm going to have the back overlay onto it so it all stays roughly the same diameter up the shank. I bring my thread back to just before the hook point and we grab our calf tail that we're using for the back wing or tail if you will. Just try to get rid of some of those stragglers. And I just measure it up to my front wing. You want them to be the same length roughly. Here in Newfoundland, bombers uh, are amazing flies for Atlantic salmon and we also use them for brook trout. So you see I did that at a diagonal as well. And when this lays down, this should make my shank pretty much uniformed in diameter the whole way to the front and back. Maybe not the case so much in this one, but that's definitely something that we can work with. So the way I tie my bombers as well, especially if I'm just going to be trimming as soon as I'm done spinning deer hair, is I just tape my front wing to keep it out of my way during... Uh, the process, process of putting the body together on this. So we're going to be starting this bomber body with some chartreuse deer hair. And you can make your butt size however large or small you want to make it. Um, it's another thing that's kind of subjective to your art. And sometimes if I'm looking for a really specific uh, size of a butt, I will take a marker on and use white thread instead and mark exactly where I want to stop. So my first clump of hair that I put on there is a bit smaller. And that's because when I'm trimming this bomber, uh, I want my taper to go down towards the back. And if you tie in the back a little bit more sparse, then you'll be able to trim uh, closer to the shank. To be honest, I don't usually like using black when I'm tying bombers, especially colored uh, bombers, because just in the off chance that the thread may end up showing through, white always works out better but I'm gonna use black today because it's easier for you guys to see at home I 
This is going to be the last clump we put on, and it's going to be a little bit larger than the other ones that we used. And I just get rid of this extra deer hair because it doesn't need to be there, and it makes spinning a little bit easier without it. All right, so we're going to go into another color in a moment. But before we do that, we want to make sure this color is pretty even, evenly dis distributed around the shank. Otherwise, our line is not going to look very good when we put in our other color. And when I say line, I mean the line between the two colors. So our next color we're going to use is a, I believe this is a green machine green or an insect green. Sorry, I should know that, but... It's a darker green. How's that sound? And we're just going to take our nails. I take my nails and I just kind of lock around the shank and I just compress it in like that. Makes for a nice tight uh, body on your bomber. And if you prefer, some people actually prefer to fish with looser uh, tied bombers and that's completely fine too because that bomber is going to sit usually a little bit lower in the water and some people actually prefer that for fishing. So a lot of this is subjective guys and I've always looked at fly tying obviously as an art form and art subjective and <laughs> that means that well one person likes another person may not like but one of the best things about fly tying is you're making flies that you want to fish. You're, you're not forced to buy one that has already been tied to somebody else's uh, preferences for fishing. I do a couple spins on each clump just to, uh, a couple spins of my thread, sorry, just to make sure it's on there very securely. Bombers can be chewed up pretty good and still be uh, very effective for fishing, so. We don't throw away ratty looking bombers in Newfoundland because we know that that thing's gonna fish awesome. There's actually people out there that'll stomp their bombers into the ground before they fish them just to make them look that way. And we have a pattern here called the dirty bomber that is uh, meant to look just god awful ugly. So I'm just taking that tape up over the eye so I can tie off my thread now. And I'm just gonna. I used my whip finisher wrong. <laughs> I always have. It works, unfortunately. It, it is wrong, but it works. So, no need to point that out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just putting a little container underneath uh, my vise, and this is going to be uh, catching all these clippings. Um, tying deer hair gets messy really, really quickly. And we just start with our general shape that we want to produce. And mine is usually tapered uh, towards the back. And it's always usually a little bit heavier in the front. And taking it down little bits at a time uh, will save you from, if you make a mistake, it's, it's easily corrected when you do it this way. If your first initial cuts are you're aiming for right down, it's uh, if you make a mistake that you, you have no fur left to work with. So so now we take a, I just put my scissors on an angle and I just kinda cut a taper in the front. And I'm using the TMCO curved deer hair scissors, which are now discontinued. It's very unfortunate because they are probably the best scissors I've ever used for tying fly, uh, deer hair flies, like bombers.
and I'm just kind of taking my time with this part because I don't want to run my scissors over the calf tail. You could tape up, oh boy, I definitely cut my calf tail. I don't know what happened there, but, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. I'm going to continue. So as I was saying, you got to be careful not to cut your calf tail. I'm a commercial tire, so normally uh, when I do that to one of these, they still fish great. It doesn't affect them fishing, but th that's just one I would throw in my box. And now we're just kind of fine tuning this bomber to the shape we want. And it's just taking off little bits. Basically what I do is, um, when I'm looking as I trim, I'm watching this horizon from my angle. And if I see anything that sticks out on that horizon, I just shape it up. So just, if, if you have a uh, rotary vise, then it makes this a lot easier to do. And as you see little imperfections on that horizon, you're just trimming them up. That tail is going to really bother me now. All right. So that's our body shape. Now we're going to put on some hackle and we're using a uh, rooster saddle and we're going to use a cinnamon color on this one. This is a Metz number no. two saddle that I dyed myself. It was cream. Just going to tie in here at the front so I'm just stripping that off actually sorry I missed a step so I bring my thread up over the wing between the wing and the shank over the wing and then on this side between the wing and the shank and basically that props your wing up very nicely and you don't have to build up bulk like just kind of propping that up so I tie that in once behind, once in front, and then I fold over the stem. And that's just really gonna lock that in place. Now, there's rules of thought on hackle wrapping that it should be the same as a salmon wet rib. I, uh, I don't subscribe to that thought. I, I like a uh, nice fully hackled bomber and that's what I really enjoy fishing. So now we're going to bring our thread up through the body and as we're doing that we're just going to move it back and forth so we don't trap any deer hair in underneath. And when you get to where your hackle stopped back there you can trim that off. Be careful not to hit your thread and then start working your way back up through the body. This is one of a few methods I use to put hackle on a bomber. Uh, this is the one I've been using lately, so that's why I'm using it now. But it really um, secures your hackle. And if you have any trapped hackle from doing that, you can just go back through with your bodkin and pick that out very easily. I'm just going to give this a once over to see if I have any trap fibers. Nothing too major. And I just take a bit of head cement obviously on the front. And I'm going to put on two or three coats of head cement or I'll put on one coat of uh, thin head cement let it dry and then I'll put a UV head on it and I always put a little uh, dab of it back here where we tied that back in. 
So this is a bomber, guys, uh, with a really crappy tail. <laughs> uh, that's life. We just work with it. I'll fish the heck out of this. Thank you very much for having a look at the video, and thank you, Partridge, for uh, putting out this CS42 hook. It is truly an amazing hook uh, for Atlantic salmon. And uh, until next time, thank you.